What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to take a moment to do a little lure review of a lure I started using towards the end of last season and it's really become a favorite of mine ever since because it works well in salt water, it works well in fresh water also, and it's under five bucks so you really can't beat that. And the lure that I'm referring to is the smaller size, it's about four inches bomber bait bonanza. They also make a larger size, I like that one as well. I just happen to use this one mostly. And the hooks that it comes with, you would probably be just fine using for freshwater use. For some largemouth bass, uh, you probably have a great time catching pickerel on this thing. Uh, however, I mostly use these for striped bass. And when I do so, I upgrade the hooks because as you can see, um, it's not too difficult to bend them. Again, probably be okay for most freshwater situations, but you could certainly upgrade the hooks for that. And I'm definitely gonna recommend doing so if you're fishing in salt water. So let's take a look at that upgrade. So when I'm fishing them for stripers, uh, I'm often using a 20 pound leader, a smaller size tactical angler's clip, and then the lure itself, we go with a much larger split ring and a size up or so uh, VMC steel plated hook. Just in the middle, not on the back, because if we put one on both, um, it's, it's kind of going to be too heavy for it, but at the same time, mostly catching smaller striped bass with this thing. And even if you do catch a bigger one, he's going to inhale it pretty easily. Much easier to just deal with one hook than two. So as I mentioned guys, fishing this on 20 pound fluorocarbon leader tactical English clip. And with this rod, I'm using 15 pound power pro braid. Now this lure has a rattle in it. So although spooks aren't the best when it comes to casting distance, the rattle definitely helps. So we've talked about how the lure casts and the tackle I use for it. Now we're going to get into the action of the lure and the two different ways that I fish it. Now for this example, or the uh, for the demonstrations in this video, we're going to be using my modified version. One thing I want to point out is when you buy this lure, if you decide to use it with the two hooks on it versus the larger one, the, the technique on your end is going to feel a little bit different. So if you get used to fishing it one way, it's gonna take a couple of minutes to get used to fishing it the other way. It's almost like, you know, if you've been fishing pencil poppers for a while and you just bought your first spook, that same difference in uh, finesse that you're gonna to have to learn. Nothing too crazy, but just something to be aware of. You know, if you make the modification and you're like, oh, this thing doesn't work, just give it some time, you'll get the hang of it. So the two techniques that I'm referring to are different timings in the twitch with the way that I work the lure. And I find that sometimes fish prefer one over the other. One is a very tight uh, wiggle that I apply to the lure, almost like a pencil popper. And the other one is more of a walk the dog, uh, spook standard type of retrieve. So we're gonna go over what both of those look like and um, the technique I use to make the lure do those two different motions. So when I want that tighter, almost uh, pencil popper like retrieve, a tighter wiggle to the spook, not so much the walk the dog action, I'm gonna keep a steady retrieve speed. Not actually uh, super fast, kind of like a moderate speed. So if you're new to fishing these smaller spooks, I'd recommend starting out with that one. In my opinion, it's definitely easier to get the hang of. You just, you just have to time it right quicker. The other one's a little bit tougher because you have to feel more of what the spook's doing in order to time it correctly to keep the uh, wider wiggle in the retrieve going properly. You'll understand what I mean when you give it a shot. So now let's get into the other retrieve or the more true spook uh, style of retrieve. I will say it is tougher to do this with a smaller spook than it is with a larger one because you have less mass that you're trying to control in a I feel like in a motion that it just naturally doesn't really want to do these smaller spooks uh, I feel like work much better in that tighter retrieve that you guys just saw but you if you get the technique down you can certainly get them to do a uh, wider motion and certainly there are times where fish prefer that retrieve over the first one so let's see what that looks like for this one, the retrieve is very similar. You're reeling a little bit slower because you're moving the rod a little bit slower. You're just trying to keep contact with the lure. And 
And again, it might take you a little bit more practice to get that one down, but I definitely recommend putting some time into doing so. Um, because like I said, there are times where fish definitely prefer that retrieve over the other one. Plus, you know, if you get that down with a smaller spook, if you know, do you decide to buy a larger one down the road, you already have the technique down. So why not? So that's a wrap guys, the Bomber Bait Bonanza. One of my favorite striped bass lures. Especially for those early mornings when I go out fishing and they're either not visibly feeding on the surface or not hitting anything else that I'm throwing at them. Uh, more often than not, I can still get them to take a swipe at this thing. And for that reason, I would highly recommend giving it a shot. Be sure to post your comments down below if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for future lure review videos. Uh, any lures you want me to try out or want to see me you know, explain what I think of them, I'd be happy to do so. Uh, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next video.